fine, Mr. M. So uh, just a little bit about what Genesis is going to talk about today. He's been with us for previous programs. He was on the panel for our Afrofuturist uh, panel we had back in February. Uh, he's performed with us, for us. He's given us some dope words, some dope wisdom. Black Panther fan got me into Black Panther more than I already was, so big shout out to him, but also a very loving friend. So uh, if you don't know much about Genesis, he is an artist here uh, in Buffalo. He's performed all around the country. Uh, he's notice he's noticeable by his uh, his signature hat, the hat of messengers, which he always has a story to tell about that. You can look at our older events for that, or ask him yourself when you see him. And uh, just an incredible person to have around. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, Mr. Kajani, he was diagnosed with lupus. Oh, I like that T-shirt. And with that, if you're not familiar with lupus, it is a very strong disease and very uh, limiting. It limits your energy, limits your ability to move around and just be the person you want to be. So, uh, but with that, uh, after a lot of searching, a lot of different types of treatments, Mr. Kajani was able to go and find uh, a solution to help him deal with what he was going through. So I won't say too much. I'll let the, the, the messenger deliver the message himself, but please welcome Genesis to the virtual stage. Yo, 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 yo. yo, yo, yo. What's popping with y'all? What up with it? Just enjoying the day, man. I got a lot of stuff that I'm doing today. Shows, video shoots, performances, all that. And it's yeah. amazing. So, yeah, like you said, man, I went to Honduras and I learned some secrets of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. So we had a, we did a podcast the Sips Tea Podcast with Genesis, another friend of ours, C. Saint, and uh, he was talking about his journey. So basically, Genesis had his own uh, extra side adventure. You know, you know, I, like when in anime, when they do the anime fillers, that's kind of <laughs> what, that's kind story of what, yeah, yeah, the story arc, yeah, he had his own arc. So uh, went on his own adventure to the, the mountains of Honduras. So yeah, man, tell us what that was like. Or if you want to start with a different part of your story, go for it. Um, no, nah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it was like, like, like you said, um, I went down there cause I got lupus and lupus like also gives me a skin disease, a skin disorder. Um, so Sebi, I studied Sebi years ago and, um, he cured everything. I mean, AIDS, cancer, herpes, HIV, you know, all of these different, um, things that he was, you know, doing of people and he ended up beating the Supreme Court uh you know when they tried to sue him for doing medicine and he was like I'm not doing medicine I'm doing I'm just teaching people how to eat right so you go down to Usha you know you go to Honduras first of all it's in Central America it's hot <laughs> there's balls <laughs> and uh, you got to adjust to the air because now you're on a volcano. Um, well, you're at the base of a volcano. So you smell sulfur, you smell phosphorus. Um, you get that, uh, you get that like kind of like deep inhale that just lets you know that you're about to be on a different journey. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> so, right. right. I went there and when I had my consultation, them ladies looked at me, they looked at my skin and they were like, oh yeah, we know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Basically, like they started speaking some real fast Spanish <laughs> and they knew they knew what had to be done, man. And um, they put me on that regimen. Okay, okay. Yeah, what was the, re yeah, what was the regimen? They have thermal water pools down there, right? Because like I said, you're at the base of the volcano. So these thermal water pools, um, it's, it's like jumping into a jacuzzi. You know what I'm saying? Like a hot jacuzzi filled with thermal water. So that thermal water has the phosphorus, the sulfur, and all of the minerals that you need. And it's a detoxification, right? They also have these saunas 
and the saunas are also powered by that thermal water. So, like I said, it's like 100 degrees in Honduras all the time anyway. You get in those saunas, it's like 300. <laughs> so, I mastered, wow. fire style, I mastered fire style juice while I was down there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I totally became in tune with, with the fire nature. Actually, nice. I keep telling I keep telling people like it's it's more like uh I I I mastered the new Keke Genkai because it's thermal water, so yeah. it's hot water. Yeah. When they fill that pool up, you can't get in it for 24 hours. It's so hot. You heard? Wow. So you take these different herbs. Like I have a bottle right here. This is a this is a bitter. This is called Maya. It's a Maya tonic. Um, this is a blood cleanser. They put you on a um they put you on a path to cleaning your colon cleaning your you know detoxing your skin detoxing your whole body everything internally because dr sabi's whole thing was mucus is the disease it just depends on where the mucus is so when you isolate where the mucus actually is and then detox that that's how you get rid of these diseases and these different things so I experienced that for three weeks, man, 21 days. Yeah. And how long have you had lupus, to your knowledge? My knowledge, about two and a half years. 2019 yeah. was when, I, when it all like, came about. Yeah. And, and to, to as much as you want to share, what was it like having lupus when you first had it and how it's been, how it's been progressing throughout the last two years? Man, you, think, you, think, you just think you're going to die every day. It feel like that because it's pain. Like, like you ever had like muscle soreness, yep. like just from working out, like, you know, that second day after you work out and you like, oh, like your body, like whatever you worked out, just don't want to move. It's a sharp pain. Like imagine that all over your body for no reason, mm. for no reason. And then like lupus is information. So you get like, uh, you get information, you know what I mean? So you, so your body hurts. You know, my, um, like I said, I got I got a skin problem, right? So where I would get bumps and things like that, it would, you know, they it, it bleeds and it, you know, it drains and just all of this stuff. Yeah. And it's like, it makes your quality of life very, very difficult. Like I ended up losing my job after I found it. Like, well, before I found that I had lupus, I lost my job. No, that's not true. It was after because after I found out I had lupus that I lost my job, but it was just like, it was because my, my, you know, employer like saw me and was just like, bro, you can't do this. You can't work this job, man. You, I mean, you got to sit down all the time. You can't lift stuff. You know I'm saying you need help. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you can't do this, then you just can't, you can't work. Right. So, right. Your whole quality of life changed with this thing. And then since I started talking about it and letting, and telling people like, yeah, you know, I got lupus. Like so many people came to me and was like, yo, I got lupus, man. And I've had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's the worst thing that I've ever lived with in my life. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, so to some people it's a death sentence, but to me, it was something that I saw I want to conquer. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And what about the treatments here in the States? Like you had to go to a whole different continent. <laughs> to get the treatment that actually works. So what's the treatment like here? The treatment is trash, bro. Like they give, like I take this stuff called a uh, prednisone and it's yeah. a steroid. And steroids are bad for you, right? Anyway, but then like on the other side of that, the, the doctors will just, they all were just kind of like, we don't know what's wrong with you. We don't know what to do. Uh, you know, you just take this medicine, but like everybody that I know that's taking that prednisone or, and had to be on it for an extended period of time, like they end up having to get like kidney dialysis. Right. You know what right. I'm saying like I'm a kidney transplants and dialysis and all of that type of stuff, bro. And it's like, I don't want to live like that. I'm not trying to be on machines. And, mm -hmm. you know, when I was here, uh, so I ended up getting an infection, right? And the joint, had me so messed up that when I went to the hospital, they was like, man, you partially septic. They was like, if you would have came a couple more days or if you wouldn't, if you would have like not have been here, I'm saying you might not be here. You feel me? Wow. So I was like, I was like, oh no, nah, that's not, that, that can't be. So on my arm, I had a pick line 
that th that my wife had to administer an IV to every day, three times a day for two hours a, a session. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And like, bro, I, you, I can't go to work. I can't do nothing. I can't do what I got to do because I always got to be here at this certain amount of time. You know what I mean? It's like, bro, I'm not about to, I'm not living like that, fam. You know what I mean? So it, 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 sent, me to, it sent me to Usha. By the time the doctors was just kind of like, yo, we really just don't know what to do. It, I was like, all right, man, I'm gonna go find somebody who do. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I did. I certainly did. Right. So shout out to uh, to the wifey for taking care of you like that. You know, sickness and health. Appreciate that. Yeah. Where she at? I saw her earlier. Where she go? Yeah. She she just. Say <laughs> hi, baby. She, what up? What up? What up? What up? What up? <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we had a question. Uh, how were you walking before? Like, what was the, the, the limiting of movement, limitations on your movement? Because you, you, do, cap, you used to do capoeira, you know what I'm saying? And you used yeah. to work out in park all the time. So, yeah. went for a big switch. Y'all see me with that cane, man, Rafiki. That's my man. <laughs> yeah, but that thing, like, like it was, it was to the point where like not even just walking, cause, cause y'all know me. Like I was walking like an old man. Like I look like Yoda. Like just imagine Yoda. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Six foot two. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I like it was. It, I don't have Rafiki in here with me right now, but like even That's to lift up out the bed. You know what I'm saying? I would have to, you know, hold them this way and put, push them up against the wall to lift myself up. You feel what I'm saying? Like that type of stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? Putting on clothes hurt, you know what I mean? I, I had, I got a shower chair, like an old lady, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, can't, I can't, I couldn't stand up in the shower for too long. It just, it was too much stuff, you know what I mean? Sure. Way too much for how, how young I am. And, you know, I got two babies. I, I just got married. Like you said, I used to do a couple of and, and work out and all that stuff. So it was like, that's not, I'm not about to go from being that to just, you know, the, the who who got chocolates lady from SpongeBob. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. And we ain't all Nick Cannon. You know, Nick Cannon has Lucas too, but he can see still making babies and still doing wild now and <laughs> running major companies and all that. You know? But uh, not everybody can have that experience, so. Um, can you share about what happened as far as like changing your diet and changing certain um, patterns in your in your uh, in your daily routine? Is it yeah. that's what made the most difference in the in the change, or was it also being in the environment that they had in Ocean Village? It's a com it's, it's a combination of both. I'll say this: you can do virtually what they do at Usha um, without having to be there, as long as you get like the herbs and stuff. Um, Cause they have the herbs there for you and they have like you can order them you know the sea moss and all that so i'll tell you this you go to usha at eight o'clock in the morning they feed you breakfast more than likely fruit then at 12 o'clock they feed you like dinner and then at four o'clock they give you sea moss and that's it <laughs> That's it. You, after twelve, you don't you don't eat solid food. I mean, they have uh, they have what's it called? Fruit trees there. So like we was picking mangoes off the tree. Oh yeah. Tamarind, gineps, uh, you know, sour sop. We right. we were able to pick stuff off the tree and eat it. Right. So so no, so no grocery stores, no having to walk to the corner store to get a honey bun. You just got the the fruit trees right then and there, pick it off. It ain't got no wax on it. It ain't been treated with no pesticides. It's on yeah. the land. Nobody's saying, hey, you only limited to five fruits a day. Nobody's like trying to, yeah, yeah. Okay, word, word, word. There's people like um in Honduras, there's people that's on the side of the road that sell fruit and stuff. So like my man come through Cliff, he used to go jogging every day and he would come back with fruit, watermelon, seeded watermelon. Cantaloupe, like you know what I'm saying? Like we got avocados and stuff all over the place. So nice. um yeah, but nah, ain't no corner stores. You know what I mean? They don't even have <laughs> to about Uber Eats or none of that. <laughs> Word, so, but yes. so so it's a detox. So they detox you 
you know, you eat only alkaline foods. I mean, so I was eating like in the morning, I was eating watermelon, apples, grapes, oranges, papaya. I hate papaya. Um, <laughs> you know, and then um, by the afternoon, it's like quinoa, uh, a salad, avocado, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And different things like, bro, we had like alkaline cookie, alkaline brownie. Like we had like a lot of different things that I didn't even know that you can make alkaline. You know what I'm saying? So if you had a combination of like, let's say you couldn't get to Usha, if you had a combination of changing your diet, because that's yeah. very important. Right. Very important. Because I like when I came back, like, mind you, I was alkaline vegan for three weeks. When I came back and I ate some meat and some cheese, my body was like, nah, we got you no, know, we flush it out. <laughs> my body was like, nah, get that. What is that? We don't even do that here, around here no more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because that's just after three weeks of not having any of that stuff in your body, then trying to put it back in your body's like, nah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and because I had so many different things that was, uh, that substituted for that, you know, meat and whatever the case may be, my body don't need it no more. Yeah, you know I mean, it is hard because at least in Buffalo, I kept telling them down there, I was like, listen, man, I'm not going to eat crazy all the time, but I am from Buffalo. So like, I'm going to eat pizza. We got some, we got some burgers and all that stuff. So like, I got to eat this food that's around here. But for the most part, I eat fruits, veggies and, and all that. You know what I mean? Cool, cool, cool. Healthy grains. So instead of eating like wheat or white bread, spelt flour, you spelt flour and teff flour and amaranth and quinoa and, and chickpea flour and different things like that because you could still have you know like i like i, I made a mushroom burger i had a portobello yeah. cap yeah made portobello cap season it like how i was season ground beef put everything i would put on the on a burger on it and ate it and it just tastes like a juicy burger like it don't even, <laughs> don't even know that you're not eating a burger nice nice we got a question too uh the okay. home machine had a question go ahead Ashin. Is there any uh, big avocados? You said, are there any big, big avocados? Big ones? Yeah. Yeah, avocados, they can get like, if this makes sense, they can get about like this big. That's a big avocado. Yeah. And then you cut it in half, you cut it in half, take the seed out, and then eat all of the green stuff. Are the seeds little? Um, the seeds are like uh, the seeds are like the size of a stone. Oh, they're a little That's bigger than this. Yeah, they're bigger than this. But you just take the knife, put it in there, pull it out. You could take that seed and put it in like a cup or over a cup and like sit it there to grow. Yep. And you grow av grow avocado tree. They take a little while to grow though. So I like them. Yeah, your hair gonna be down to the floor by the time that avocado tree. <laughs> <laughs> cool. thank you, Shane. All right, thank you, Shane, for that question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. John also has some other questions too. Yeah, have you lived in Buffalo your whole life? And where did you grow up? I, I've, I've been, I'm born and raised Buffalo, New York, seven one six. I'm just asking the area because Buffalo has one of the highest rates of lupus uh, in the country, as among other wow. cancers. And I was just curious, is like what general area you, you grew up in? One four two one one for the most part, but I'm in 09 right now. Yes, yeah, so I think it's it's wild, but like you know, one four two and one, one four two one two, one four two one five, one four two eight, one four two oh nine have the highest rates of, of lupus and six other cancers um, in the nation. You know what I mean? And I think this just all speaks to like when we when we don't work with the earth and heal the earth. You know what I mean? It hurts us. And then these, uh, these, these, some of these urban planners and these white folks sort of have put us in places, you know, where, where we get this sickness. Then I looked up the average cost of curing lupus the Western way a year is $35,000 a year, right? Maybe you don't personally pay that, you know, some of the health insurance and it's complicated, right? But, you know, just to say like that they made an industry out of making us sick and there's you know the lupus center at the medical campus and all these things and just it's amazing i like it's beautiful for you to tell your story because it cuts through all that 
it says like we don't we don't we don't need one we put in this position too. We don't we don't need to be paying them. How much did the trip cost? I was there for three weeks, so it was like thirty seven fifty. They give you every, every week that you're there. They take. They we can send them. everybody to Hot Doors easy, easy. We can bring all that here. Um, so I think it's just beautiful the way that you're able to tell your story because it shows people the path, so they're not trapped in the cycles that, that they want us put in. So much respect. Thank you very much for, for doing what you're doing and, and for letting people know about how to heal themselves. Yeah, absolutely, man. And like you said too, like I grew up, my uncle, my uncle had lupus all my life. That was the only reason why I even knew what it was. And I watched him growing up and it was like, you know, he was on dialysis, his hair was falling out, different things was going on to him. And I'm like, dang, man, like, what happened? What's happening to you? Like, why is it even happening like that? And then when I got it, it was just like, no, no, uh -uh. this is not, I'm not doing that. Cause I watched him struggle all my, all of my life. And it was like one of my favorite uncles. So it was just kind of like, nah, I can't be one of them people and then when you go to the doctors and they're like, yeah, you're going to live with this for the rest of your life. Your, your life is going to suck and blah, blah, blah. It's like, nah, you don't get to choose that for me because I believe in God. You know what I'm saying? And God gave us free will. So I have free will to actually learn how to fix this thing. You know what I'm saying? And because there is somebody out there who, who has proven to fix and cure this thing, I'm not about to just, I'm not going to live my life knowing that I had the opportunity to go and get the cure and I just never did you feel what I'm saying like because I didn't have the discipline or something stupid like because that's what it is it's all a discipline you know yeah you know you grew up eating you know what they call soul food all your life so you used to you know bacon and grease and 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 beef and all of that stuff that you normally eat but like at the end of the day there's substitutes, there's other things that you can eat. But then on the other side of that is, man, it's so much food out in this world that if you take it, if you take the mind state of it being an expedition and like a journey and like, okay, well, you know, for 25, 26, 27 years of my life, I've been doing things this way. Now let me just try to do something this way. Let me, let me do something else. Because one of the first things that they tell you when you go to Usha is, don't expect to be cured in a week. It's a slow process. It's a process nonetheless, but it can work depending on how disciplined you are. So you just got to be able to just say no to certain things. You got to be able to say yes to certain things. You got to be willing to try new things. You know what I mean? Like I had, we had a, a big soup and they gave you an avocado with a big old soup. And I was like, well, what am I going to do with the avocado? And I, when I would take a spoonful of the, the soup, I would just cut a piece of the avocado and eat it along with the soup. Yeah. That was just something that I did and, and, it, and I ate it and it's good. You know, so it, it's, it's a cool thing because now I'm in a different mind frame as far as like, oh, you know, you know, some people only eat hot pockets and subs. And it's like, nah, I'm eating so many different types of foods and different, different things that my palate is always, you know, yeah. being introduced to something new. So it makes it fun. I love food. I'm fat. <laughs> All right. In yo, real some life. Fat, like, some of the fat people in here was like, yo, what? <laughs> nah, 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 John. Nah, John. Nah, I'm, I'm, I promise you, you couldn't out eat me, fam. <laughs> I get it in. We're about to have uh, the first Wakanda Alliance uh, food challenge. No, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a whole bunch of watermelon and, and apples and grapes and, and oranges and everything and see how much you can eat. I could take a whole watermelon down right now. <laughs> you got that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's talk about your quality of life, man. You did this thing. Now you come, you say you're in the new mind frame right now. So what's up? Now you get you got the music thing going on and all that. You got some performances coming up. You got a music video shoot today at LaSalle yeah. at 1 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to I'm about to shoot the music video. I'm listen, I'm you see how up and vibrant I am? I was not like this a month ago, bro. Like not at all. And I can't fake it. Like I can't fake like, oh, I'm so I'm so tired, I'm so dead. And then next thing you know, I'm like this. That this is who I truly am. Like this is this is you know me. You knew me before this. Uh -huh. So you know that when I was getting sick, that something was wrong. All my friends knew something was wrong because I don't act like that. 
I'm not a victim. I'm not somebody who want to be who I want people to pity me and all that stuff. I like to do stuff. You know what I'm saying? So since I've been there, listen, I'll tell you that thermal water pool, that pain that I had in my back, like I had like real bad pain in my back. Every inch that I put of my body in that water as, as I descended, the pain melted off. It just melts away. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? So my quality of life is totally different. It's totally better. Like I'm healthy. I feel better. They got, they gave me this salve that they made. I call it Jin Usha cream because they don't have a name to it. It's a, it's a salve Dr. Sadie's wife made for me specifically. I put that on my skin. My skin is getting clearer. I'm literally like peeling keloids and stuff off my face, bro. Like and neck, like, you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting clearer. Like I'm, I'm, I'm cute again, fam. <laughs> Welcome back to the cute game. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, so as we get to the end here, uh, do you have any advice for the youth about diet and like how they should approach diet when they're still young? They might not have a job or whatnot, so they can buy the food that they need. They might be surrounded by people who want to keep those habits, those negative habits, and maybe not might not listen to them when they say, "Yo, the mom, I need a watermelon, not a not a piece of pocket." So, uh, what advice would you have to the youth? Um, I would say this. Like I said, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a huge believer in God. God does not make anything on this world that we can't or shouldn't eat. Okay. And everything when they talk about nutrition and when they talk about um your body and your blood and your bones and all of that stuff, take that seriously. Learn what the minerals that you need. Learn what they are and learn which fruits and vegetables has those. Make a chart and try to have one of those things every time you eat. And it'll make it'll make food and eating so much more fun for you, you know, because you'll be learning and you'll be getting it. And then another thing, too, is fruit don't never taste bad. <laughs> it's always good unless you buy it spoiled. But other than that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's, there are charts. You can go online and look up a chart right now that has which foods have which vitamins. Or like, it is, name out each vitamin and then put a food underneath each chart. Yeah. And, and try it. new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. Even if you don't like it, it's okay because you tried it. Try new things, please. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Oh, uh, yeah. So, everybody, Genesis is here with us. If you're just now joining us, Genesis is talking about his journey through. Uh, having lupus and going to the ocean village to get healed, talking about diet, talking about renewing the energy, making the right choices as far as drinking the right water, eating the right foods. Um, yeah, and he's got a video shoot. Tell us a little bit more about the music video you got going on today. It's, the song is called Testify, and it's my song to all of the people who helped me and supported me. It's my song to God. It's my song to my wife. It's my song to everybody. So. It's a it's a positive joint. It's an inspirational joint. It's different than what I normally do, but I love it. So go yes, check sir. it out on all streaming yes, platforms. It's called Testify. Yes, and sir. if anybody's watching this, I'm shooting the video at once. So I'm about to get up and go like right now. So word, word, word. yeah, we're about to jump into the comics soon too. Um, we also have talked about a theme song we're working on for our podcast. So yes, yes, yes. about that real quick before you go. The song is called T'Challa. That's all yeah. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo. So the, the singers, the Galactic Tribe. Oh yeah, Devon's got some singers too, too. So we're gonna fix that track up and, and put another layer on it. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be lazy. Mr. Mr. M's got a verse for it and everything too. <laughs> Word. It's gonna be great. So look out for the Galactic Tribe podcast coming soon. Everybody, one time, give it up for Mr. Genesis for coming. In. Word. And I will see y'all later. I gotta sign off. All right, no doubt. Everybody, follow Genesis. At Genesis 84, all streaming platforms. Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. Bro, I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, bro, peace. All right, bro, I'll talk to you in a minute. Peace. Yeah, all right. So, yeah, that was, that was dope. Cool.